Memphis Grizzlies have been nothing short of a dumpster fire to start this NBA season. They are currently the second worst team record-wise in the Western Conference, and they are just overall not a good team, and they currently sit at 5-14, and 14, which is a far cry from what the Memphis Grizzlies' expectations were going into the season. Even without John Morant on the team, they were probably much worse than they expected, and they are currently, like I said, sitting at the bottom of the Western Conference. On top of that, they have the second worst offense in the entire NBA from an efficiency perspective perspective and really the future of this team isn't looking much better as they have six games still until John Morant comes back and in those six games they have Detroit which should be a win but then you have Minnesota who is four losses on the entire season almost as they have less losses than Memphis has wins which is extremely extremely impressive and then they have Dallas, Houston twice, who's much improved, the, and the Oklahoma City Thunder, who have also been very good this year. So there is a legitimate possibility that they go about 1-5 in five in this period before John Morant officially can come back from his suspension. And then you have to imagine, even when he comes back from his suspension, he's going to take at least a few games to get back into shape, back into rhythm, and things like that. So there is a very real chance by the time that John Morant gets back, they will be 6-19, and 19, and they will still have growing pains and chemistry issues to get through in the very beginning of the time when John Morant gets back. So really the future of this team, unless they can somehow manage to turn around it very, very quickly, which they haven't shown any signs of being able to do, I think personally this team could be in huge trouble this season. Now that I kind of summarized their current situation that are they're in, some of the key factors to why this is happening. The first one, now these aren't in any order, like it's not like one's more important than the other, they're kind of all combined into one each other, but the first reason I have is that Jaron Jackson Jr. just simply isn't a number one option. They figured that out the very hard way this season. Now, he's not been bad to, per se. Like, he's still a very good defender. He's giving about 18 points per game, but he's just simply as the number one option with teams game planning for him and really, like, focusing in on him and not having to worry about John Morant. He is having one of his worst efficient seasons of his entire career, as he is currently shooting 41% from the field as a center that is god-awful, and 28.6% from the three-point line. That is god-awful. 28%, anything under 30% from the three is just borderline unacceptable and you probably shouldn't be shooting them anymore and it's a lot coming because Jaron Jackson Jr. is now having to take way more shots obviously but he's also kind of just getting focused on doubled more like a lot more offensive pressure is put on him and he has not really rose to the occasion he's only averaging one more point per game than he did last year and he's getting more minutes and he's taking more shots and it's just not leading to more points for him and it's actually leading him to being a worse overall offensive player now yes the defense is still there and he's still a good player I'm not saying he's bad I'm just saying that they have found out the extremely hard way that Jaron Jackson Jr. simply is not good enough to be a number one option for a good winning team in the NBA. And the second reason is going to be the fact that they let Dylan Brooks go. Now, I know Dylan Brooks was scapegoated hard when he was at Memphis. Like, they, uh, everyone said he was a problem. He wasn't playing good. He wasn't efficient. And he really wasn't efficient. But the mentality and the toughness that he brought to the team was very big. It was a huge part of the culture that Memphis kind of cultivated. Because for a long time, the Memphis Grizzlies were kind of that team that no one wanted to mess with. They're young they're feisty they're hungry they're gonna play very hard and they don't really care who you are and that was a huge part because that was Dylan Brooks's attitude that he brings to every game that he plays in but obviously as you know they let Dylan Brooks go this offseason and they just haven't had that edge that they once had now John Morant probably is gonna bring that back a little bit and when Marcus Smart gets healthy he'll bring that a little bit but not to the point that Dylan Brooks does Dylan Brooks literally gives zero fucks when he's on the NBA court and they just don't have a guy like that currently on their team that mental leadership they are greatly lacking that and then even on offense he's been a great player for the Houston Rockets this year he's been extremely extremely efficient and just overall a good player for them and it's just looking like that was a big mistake to let Dylan Brooks walk this season in free agency and it has affected them in a very bad way especially with their star player out you need guys like Brooks to keep the mentality and the leadership and things like that intact and he is just they've been sorely missing him in my opinion kind of even piggybacking off that Dylan Brooks thing is just the fact that they have no identity like I said in the past their identity was grid and grind like that was their saying like grid and grind they play hard they're gonna do all the little work they're gonna talk shit they're gonna not be afraid and when not back down like they just don't have that because I mean they're missing Steven Adams for the season which sucks but Steven Adams is a strong kind of hard-nosed center old school type guy very strong and he kind of helps reinforce that he's kind of the quieter one Marcus Smart should bring that but he hasn't been fully healthy Jaron Jackson Jr. isn't really like that and John Morant is and they're just missing that entire 
edge and reputation and maybe once smart and john morant do come back maybe that they will start finding their identity a lot more and there will be a better player when i mean a better team obviously when morant gets back the problem is the damage might already be done being this about what a little bit over a quarter of the way through the season already so the damage could be getting done already by the time john morant gets back and by the time he gets into full swing of things will the chemistry be there will the team buy in i don't know and i don't think the coach is the best because the coach i mean he has already had a few interviews where he's just flat out blamed refs and even if refs are bad it is never a good look to just go in an interview and saying that's the reason you lost because almost never arrest the sole reason that you lost the game so to complain about them is pretty weak especially when you have one of the rest, worst work records in the nba obviously not it's not only the rest like it's something y'all are doing as a team and i think that was a pretty weak thing and i think their leadership all around has been severely lacking now and i don't know how much john morant is going to help with mental maturity and leadership <laughs> um you know it's probably not a strong suit so i just really don't know how this team's going to find their identity they have no swag to them they have no grit and grind they're no longer an elite offense like they once were and is john morant really going to bring them from the second worst offense in the nba to a top 15 it, that's debatable honestly so i just think this team overall has really taken a step back and i think it's be a borderline disaster what they're currently going through and a lot of it stems from letting dylan brooks go and free agency in my opinion and i just think overall this team needs a complete revamp i think stephen adams's career is probably getting closer to the end because he's getting old he's getting injured things like that uh i think they need a third star on this team from the never do anything and i just think overall this team is probably a at their peak second round playoff team and if they're super hot maybe maybe the western conference finals if they're fully healthy for a season but I don't think they can ever make the finals. And I think the Western Conference Finals is even a ginormous stretch, honestly, with the current landscape of things. So I think the second round is more realistic for this team when they're fully healthy. And that's usually not a position you want to be in if you're a team. You don't want to be in the middle of the pack, just decent. So I really don't know what they're going to do. They probably need to make trades, either blow it up, build around John Morant on a rebuild, or try to get another third star to help them contend sooner rather than later. But something needs to be done. I don't think Taylor Jenkins is the correct head coach for this team either. And I just think overall, they have a lot of issues that they need to address. But unfortunately, you guys, that's going to be for this video. So comment below. Do you agree with me? Do you think the Memphis Grizzlies have a lot of issues? What issues do you think that I didn't mention that they have? Only your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like, point, hit the like button, subscribe, and me the absolute word. I mean, I hope you have a blessed day. God bless you. So you need a blessed day. All glory to God. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Boom. Blah.